Because uh, for one, I started, I started, I started <laughs> shouting at Matt. I was like, "The boss on the phone. He wants to speak to you." Matt's like, "The boss? Who's the boss?" I'm like, it's Gregor. It's oh, Gregor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought Alex was on the phone. Yeah, definitely. And I think even like more recently, like I think the way we're building through this summer as well, like I feel like we're improving every game, and like it's going to come. Ju- like I feel it's just going to come just in time for this for this first game. And did you watch 2019 World Cup? And if you did, did you think I could be playing in this four years later? I did watch it, but no, no, no. It's been, it's been a sort of whirlwind yeah. to be honest. Um, Cause would you get less at that point? Uh, or would you be? No, that's a good question. Yeah, I would have been. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to a very special edition of the official Scottish Rugby Podcast with Caroline Blair and Chris Patterson. Today we are joined by a host of Scotland stars who've just been named in Gregor Townsend's 2023 Rugby World Cup squad. Xander, Matt Fagerson, I mean the first question for you boys are your brothers. Uh, how did it go down when you told the family? Do you want to say? Yeah, uh, we were, well, I was at Xander's um, playing with the kids and uh, we'd had a coffee and stuff and then Gregor called Xander and he <laughs> snuck away uh, for a quiet phone call and uh, I was on the trampoline with the kids so after Xander had obviously got the good news, uh, Gregor asked what he was up to and he said, oh, we're just, we're just at home. So he said, oh, just pass the phone over then. So I was shouting at Matt, I was like, the boss on the phone, he went to speak to him. I was like, the boss? Who's the boss? I'm like, it's Gregor, it's Gregor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex was on the phone. Yeah, you, you could um, have so played a fast one there, Z. You could just have hung up and no bother. <laughs> <laughs> I already told him. I already told him he was there. You know. Um, yeah, no, nah, I didn't think it was the time. Nah, it's like uh, that's like when sometimes when the team gets announced when you're in camp and your room you're sharing with the room and the phone goes to the coach. You don't want the phone call because that's you. No being oh. in some of the usually it's Gregor that delivers the bad news. Well, so. yeah, there's usually a, a, yeah. a, a kind of standoff that who's answering that phone. It's one of us is out here, but yeah. both yeah. good news for you. So delighted. And did you lean on Xander's experience of previous World Cups, Mark? Because this will be your first trip, eh? Uh, yeah, I've, I, I got the phone call, the the bad phone call this time last course, uh, yeah. last World Cup. So um, yeah, I think it was, I was a bit taken aback and a bit emotional about it all. Uh, ah. Just having gone through that experience to then obviously get the phone call to say you're going this time. Um, was pretty awesome, and but yeah, like I, I watched every game when in 2019 when Zando was playing. Uh, I watched that try um, that he doesn't stop going on about. Uh, so um, yeah, no, it was Tw- pretty, 20 meter finish. I told him pretty amazing. <laughs> A few times that story, I'm sure, has come out replay. Uh, from your perspective as well, to be going as brothers, it's a real privilege, I'm sure. To how are you feeling in that sense of it? I think just yeah, really proud. Um, I think, I guess I've touched on before. For me, like playing for Glasgow with my brother was really special, and then going one further and playing for Scotland together was a dream come true. Um, but I think going to World Cup together is even more special, and one that I think our family really enjoy as well. And are they going out? Yeah, the family are coming out. Yeah, uh, in their masses. So uh, really relieved and and really glad that we, we are selected now. So um, so yeah, so it's uh, really special, and we're going to enjoy every moment. It's a big day, obviously this, but. It's not the culmination either, is it? I can see a real sense in the period you and all the squad that actually this is the start of a journey as well. It's, a, it's an end point in some ways, but it's more of a start point than an end point in terms of what's ahead in the next few weeks. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that you know we've been building steadily over the last couple of years, and um, especially in the warm-up games, we've gone off to a great start. And uh, yeah, like I think Gregor touched on it in one of his interviews, like making a 33-man squad is incredible. But I think everyone's chomping at the bit and wanting mm. to to be in that starting team versus S- South Africa. So, um, so yeah, there's plenty of work to, to be done still. You mentioned that you got the other call four years ago. So how have you grown in that time and prepared for that moment and receiving that call? Um, I think coming into the camp, this year, obviously you've got expectations and you want to be a part of it. I think that having the, that call four years ago was obviously pretty tough. Um, and then, yeah, so I've... I've sort of I've prepared myself for that um, so that it didn't come a, as a big shock. But um, but yeah, I think that obviously the high of getting it now and um, four years of work all coming to the fore is, uh, is pretty special. Did that experience of that phone call or the feelings and the emotions that you've spoken about from that phone call come into your mind at any point in the training camp in the last no, six not weeks? Not really. Like I, I think, yeah, like I, you don't really want to look that too far ahead. I was just yeah. sort of focusing day to day and trying to to get better in the, in the best shape I can in the pre-season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't looking too far ahead in that regard. Mugsy, a bit of work under the belt <laughs> the last few weeks. Is it's, uh, as yeah. Matt says, you kind of focus in more on the games now. There's obviously 
you know, a lot of the rugby to play, but I think it's touching is it on fine that. tuning now? Yeah, I think it's touching on that. You know, it's such a long process that the build up to it. Yeah. You know, you've got to get through the season, you got to get selected for the initial squad first, and then of yeah. course the training's the training's really intense. Um, and it's pretty fatiguing, so it's more about getting through the training as well. <laughs> if you get too far ahead of yourself, you know, yeah. um, anything can happen. So it's just more, uh, as the last couple of weeks I've had as well, I think for me it's just um, yeah, really proud and really excited to be here. Um, but as you've touched on, the job's, it's, it's, the job's just starting now. Um, what are your most vivid memories from four years ago in Japan? Four years ago for me was, I think, first of all, I just love Japan. Yeah. Um, what an amazing country. And um, the people were incredible and we got such a warm welcome. Um, but also the rugby, yeah, the rugby, we, di we didn't give a great account of ourselves, but I think we, we left a, a few points out there in a few games and we, sh we, sh we should have won a few more games. But for me personally, um, an unbelievable experience mm -hmm. and my family came over. Mm -hmm. So to have my, my, my little girl, Iona, who's, she's four now, but at the time she was six months, uh, that was the highlight for me. Um, it's so our second World Cup as well. It's the second World yeah, Cup, yeah. Say, so she made it just in time. There's, there's a great photo of um, Iona and me and Scott Cummings um, after the Russia game. And um, I think she's looking at me in awe because I'm so sweaty. She's like, <laughs> why is <laughs> dad so like sweaty? That. But of course, it was <laughs> really special. It'll be the same this time around. Um, and Hamish is a bit gutted because, of course, he was in, in mum's tummy last time. Oh, so he's okay. like, where was I? And I was like, oh, yeah. your mum's tummy. So hopefully you can come over this one. Well, we technically you'll be there in second yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to this this Rugby World Cup then, from your perspective, I guess, having had that experience in Japan, mm -hmm. has that played on your mind in terms of your preparation for this? Have you got, is, is, does it factor into your into your preparation? Um, I think maybe a little bit. I think you know what mm -hmm. you, you know what's coming. If that makes sense, you know, it's it's a bit like I've been really lucky to be involved in a few Junior World Cups with under 20s. But of course, that's four weeks, four games, really intense, four day turnarounds. Compared to for me, the last time the World Cup, it was a little bit longer. You know, we're, we're there, we were there for five weeks, I think. Um, s sorry, seven weeks because we were in Nagasaki for two weeks before. So it's more about just enjoying every moment as it comes because it goes by so fast. But at the time, you feel like it's really long as well. So it's just making sure you. You put every week just get out of it as much as you can because it does go by so fast. There are little things that people who've been on previous World Cups can share. It, it, it sounds, it probably sounds stupid, but like there's no real pre-match or post-match functions like you normally have in an international. You're chucking mm -hmm. your tracks on immediately after the game. You need your accreditation to get onto the bus. Anywhere. Yeah. anywhere. So there's like, no closure, I guess, at the end of the well, game. Not, it, it's reached. almost like playing club or school rugby. Like yeah. there's no, there's no mm -hmm. formality around it. It's, it's, you're there for the rugby. Also, when you know when you go into your, your knockout stages, there's a flight in the runway going one way or the other. Like yeah. it's, yeah. It's like that there's no it? sentiment. It's 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 different to what a Six Nations is in some yeah. ways, isn't it? Where the stuff that goes around, so it purely focuses on the games, and it's that's where you rely on experience around because it is a bit different. Yeah, it is. Well, you've got first World Cup, second World Cup, and four World Cups. So I guess to round off, what would you say? <laughs> it was different from my fourth to my first, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even more different between my last, which was what 2011, and now. Yeah. Um, like the intensities of the charts, the physicality, the format's different as well. There's more time. There's kind of two weeks between the yeah. first two games, yeah. and then there's a week between the games. We played games in a four or five day tournament, mm -hmm. um, but the intensity and the the pressure, for some ways, is far greater now. Um, but also we're in a really good position. We're in a really good position after the, the the summer series, and there's so much talent within the squad that it's well. Put it this way, it's going to be exciting to watch. It'll be even better to play. We're yeah. delighted for you both. Uh, there's something really special about seeing brothers go to a World Cup together, and uh, we're wishing nothing but the very best. Cheers very much, Matt. Thank you very Ferguson. much. Well, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Well, Scotland captain Jamie Ritchie, uh, congratulations first and foremost, but also. Happy birthday. Thank happy you very birthday. much. Today? Today, yeah. What about that? There Today, you go. No. Happy birthday. Another year older. No, no, somebody planned it. That's <laughs> a pretty good present. Yeah, no, really special. Um, yeah, really nice day. Like, good to see all the boys. Everyone's chuffed and happy. And yeah, it's a really kind of proud moment for, for me and my family. For you at this point as well, it is a journey. We talk about this a lot. This is the start of it. But it is a journey up to this point too. And as Scotland captain for your first World Cup, how are you feeling about getting to this point? Yeah, really proud. Um, I think, yeah, like you say, it is a journey. The whole kind of process is, and it's important to kind of take stock sometimes and enjoy these moments. And I think, yeah, I'm like really proud of what it's taken and what I've done to get here and the sacrifices that people have made for me and, and things like that. So yeah, it's it's a special day. And then, but like you say, it's also the start of another journey and we're 
we're does. gearing up for for something pretty special. I think uh, it's good to know. It's good to hear. So, Isn't it? it's touched. I can everybody's touched on that, which is which is excellent. The um, personally though, like I get a sense of relief when days like this is obviously joy and pride and everything. But a sense of relief, and if you think back to last World Cup, where you broke your cheekbone, didn't you, the day before you left, yeah. and there was doubts, and you got go over that, and it played a massive part. Um, you know, personally were outstanding in the games as well, but then building up to summer series, you've had a calf niggle, you've missed a couple of games. Like, is there with all the pride and all the joy, is there relief in there as well because of the, the kind of journeys up to this point be quite similar? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I was slightly less worried about my calf than I was when my <laughs> face got oh, smashed, no. but um, <laughs> and that was literally the day before you flew, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it was the Georgia game. We wanted to be playing on the Friday Sunday. night, and we flew on like the Sunday, Sunday or something. Night, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was. My operation was on the Tuesday, mm. uh, so the boys had already left and then flew the Thursday, met them in Nagasaki, so yeah, it was uh, with a big puffy face with an eye that didn't close. That, <laughs> that must have been yeah. so hard, looking back. That uh, probably, you know, the hardest part of it was when I didn't know that I was yeah. going to be able to play, so like when I did it, obviously I knew at the time mm. that this is not right, like I'm, there's something happened here. And then went off the pitch and just sat in the changing room like, that's me, like dust, I'm not, I'm not going. Like uh, this, this feels like it's going to be a longer one. And then, at what point does your mind switch from that to like, no, nah, this is going to be me? Yeah, I think when when James said, "No, nah, nah, well, there's a chance. We, there's a chance you can yeah. go. Like, if it's not too bad, like well, you can get, you can turn around in a couple of weeks." Yeah. If the doc's saying that, yeah, and then you're like, great, yeah. right, that, that's what we'll do then. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and like like I say, when I turn back to now, like I was never that worried about my yeah. calf. Um, that we had those picked up in the Italy game and it happened like during training and it mm. wasn't like a, a, a massive event that yeah. happened it was just one of those ones that kind of just came on it was a bit tight and sore and then it was more just being careful so like, I never really felt in doubt about that one Is that one of the benefits of experience as well though that is in the past where there might be that temptation to, to to carry on to play through but actually knowing your body knowing your niggles saying yes I could but it's better to err on the side of caution we've got yeah. World Cup ahead of us yeah I think so definitely and for me it's I've been pretty lucky in my career touch wood that I've, I've been reasonably robust I've not had anything too bad apart from obviously my hammy last last year but that was my first real big injury and like apart from that I've kind of known when I've not quite been right and I've, I feel like I've been quite good at, at saying that and and sometimes just pushing through the things that you maybe shouldn't worry about too much so yeah touch wood um, continue to be so but um, yeah like I, I feel like I'm, I know my body quite well absolutely and just on the field you've been captain for the last 18 months or so but you've been part of big wins and big victories for Scotland over the last three years leading up to you know World Cup now since the last World Cup you think of victories in France and Twickenham and big victories at home under pressure under expectation all these little bits of the jigsaw yeah. help with the preparation for what's what you're going to face in the next two or three weeks don't they yeah definitely and I think even like more recently like I think the way we're building through this summer as well mm. like I feel like we're improving every game and like it's going to come ju like I feel it's just going to come just in time for this for this first game and do you feel that too yeah no I genuinely genuinely do because that? like I'm that Italy game like it was a good start but it wasn't perfect but we did enough to win and mm. win well and then this the France game obviously a bit of a ropey start but then the second half was where we wanted to be kind of at for that game. And then I felt like the way we started against France mm -hmm. at the weekend there was better again. And apart from that five minute blip, I think we played really well. So but yeah, even it after feels that like five minute blip, you have to yeah. solve and the you blip in. Do you know what I mean? And you have to come back as well. Yeah, I think yeah. like you could have played well and not scored yeah. any points, whereas yeah. I feel like we scored three tries to get it back and then yeah so it's been it's good I feel like we're building really well and the group's in such a good place the, the momentum as well that the, the fans are going on this journey with you Scottish Gas Murrayfield we've seen it their last opportunity to see Scotland at home before the World Cup is coming up against Georgia and I guess seeing that build seeing that momentum that we're talking about but it goes beyond the borders of Scotland too there's a real excitement yeah. about teams who want to be challenged by playing Scotland yeah, and I think you see that by the way that teams select when they come up against us. The, thing, the things they talk about in the media before games and things like that. Like, I feel like we're really w well respected, and for one of a better word, feared as a team. Like they know that if we we show up, like we can beat anyone. So uh, yeah, we're in a we're in a good spot.
you've got the squad here today. They are looking. There's there, there's a Everybody's real. Everybody's avoiding yeah. us. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you come and speak to it's us. It's not that they're avoiding <laughs> us. I say it's that they're over at the bar at the. Uh, the the there's free bacon rolls and <laughs> croissants in there. I think. Uh, no. uh, trying to avoid eye contact with, with, with Chris Leck and eat, eat what they can at the moment. But um, when they look at when you're looking at this squad and seeing everybody today, there's a wee game station over there. There is a really nice playing group that you've got going on here, yeah. isn't there? And I guess you've got athletes, you're all professionals, this is your job, but it must surely be a key fact to have the right personalities and everybody having that cohesion when you're about yeah, to go to France. The biggest thing I think for us from where probably we've been in the past is that everyone can be themselves. Like no one feels that they have to kind of kind of be insular or, or hide parts of themselves. Like everyone's just like completely open and some boys are really weird, <laughs> some boys are quiet, some boys are noisy, uh, the team room's full every night. Like it is, it is a really good, it's a really good group and like everyone feels comfortable in the environment I think which is important. Um, but yeah, like like you say, like everyone, everyone has just, we just have a good time together. Like when we're not on the field, not that we don't enjoy training, but like when we're not on the field we have a great time and, and training's competitive and it's intense and everyone buys into that and then but when we switch off like yes there's a review and things like that but but boys just enjoy each other's company which is probably the most important thing especially when you're going into something like a world cup mm -hmm. where you are spending an intense amount of period of time together and like i think boys knowing when i think one of the good things about we have in france is everyone's got their own room so if boys need their own time they can go and have it or if guys need out of the hotel there's a group of guys who want to go golfing so they can go and golf or there's there's different things that people go, like a lot of the props have um, discovered jet skis while we were there oh. in Nice the first time <laughs> so every day off they're spending like ridiculous amount of money hiring jet skis for <laughs> for the day so um, like there's guys who yeah they kind of just find things that they want to do and like it's, it's a great thing does this bring a lot back for you Mossy? So I'm going to pick up on that it's brilliant to hear that because everybody is totally different and having been involved with some World Cups that kind of transcended pretty much from professionalism starting to where we are now the key strength a lot of people thought the well, first World Cup was 1999 a lot of people would think that players weren't professional then because it was the infancy of professional rugby they were totally and utterly professional when they had to be and then but the, the ability for players then to switch off and have a game of golf or have a chat or have a lark around was was better I think than it is now I think there's been a pressure for players for so long to be what they're meant to be every second every day without them being themselves so it's quite refreshing to hear the fact that do you know what when you have to be on it you're on it right, I suppose training you can switch off you, you can I be think the difference maybe would be want. like when you guys are talking about there like you probably had to be a bit more personal and around what you did like you had to commit yeah. to doing something yourself yeah. whereas like for us like all we've known is we've been told where yeah. to do where to be what to do for the majority of our career since we were teenagers. And that's, been, that's sold as a strength. Yeah. Listen, we'll take care of him. All you need to do is take care of the game. I hated that as a player. I yeah. wanted to... Let me, let me figure out how to get from A to B. Let me get, you know, a bus or a taxi or... I'll get to somewhere, like... Let me find a training pitch so I can go with a bag of balls and kick. Like, it doesn't always have to be prescribed for you. And that's great what Jamie's saying is the fact that, you know what, there's, there's a freedom and a trust that you're not mollycoddled, which is, I think, is a really good thing. It is good. It's your, good. Your relationship with Gregor as well is something that's been really lovely to watch too. And I guess you still received that call on Monday, I'm assuming. You've had that chat. I had mine yesterday, but yeah. <laughs> was it yesterday? <laughs> you made you your wait. It's like, what? <laughs> no, I, I, think, I can't remember. I think it was Monday. Delay. <laughs> <laughs> it was Gregor that called you though. Yeah, it was Gregor. Yeah. But then I think I can remember him actually saying if I was in the squad or not because we were just chatting about something else. I was like, all right, I'm in then. He's just like, to be oh, sure. yeah, sorry, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I never, never assumed me. How is that relationship then in terms of it's a, a journey, it's growing as well. You, you, you are now embedded in that captain's role. You've had time to, to get used to it. You're very much involved with it. How, how do you feel that relationship works between you? Yeah, I think it's really good. Um, I think we both kind of know how each other works and like I'll... My, I like to be in a position of where, I, like, if I can try and know as much of what's going on, then I feel like I can kind of help facilitate everyone else being kind of comfortable with it. So, yeah, Gregor, I'll ask Gregor if there's stuff going on or for what we're thinking for this day or that day, or is there guys like you need me to keep an eye on or anything like that. So yeah, I think it's good that and he trusts me with that that information, and he, I think he knows as well that if. I don't necessarily agree with someone. I think we should do something slightly differently and around scheduling or what we're doing that day. Then, 
then I can come to him with it and it's not necessarily seen as like a criticism or anything like that so yeah it's it's good we're in a good spot I think and the leadership on the whole I think is like that as well like it's not just it's not just me and Gregor calling all the shots like it's very much a team effort from from the guys who are in that thistle group to make decisions and I'll lean on them like for certain parts of it like massively and they they probably take more control of it than I would and yeah I think that's really important because I, like I don't want to have to be dealing with everything like it doesn't suit me to be like that and like the people have their own strengths and and things I'd rather just kind of settle into how I want to do things and, and let and let the other guys take the lead on some things. Jamie Ritchie, Scotland captain, we wish you nothing but the very best. Congratulations on getting to this point and very Thank best you. wishes. For Thank you very much. Good luck. Cheers. Scott Cummins, congratulations, first of all. When well, We are meant to be getting joined by Rory Darge at some point as well, but he's currently, I think he might, might have found yeah, the booth. He's done a run on. He's coming. <laughs> he's, he's left, he's the left you. Spot. He's left you so um, When did you get the call? Uh, yeah, so we got the call, so I think it was Monday afternoon. Uh, we were told we'd get it at some point on Monday, so obviously the whole day you're just sort of sitting there waiting on it, can't really concentrate much else. But um, yeah, got it Monday, so that was obviously you know lovely to get. So yeah. Here he comes, strolling in, oh. cup of tea, I pick up the bike. You're now live, so. Rory <laughs> <laughs> Dirge has just joined us. We're just talking about when you get the call. Now, Matt was telling us that if you get the call from Gregor, usually it's not the good call. Uh, so... How did that go down? Did you did you get the call on Monday as well? I got the call on Monday from Gregor, yeah, but I didn't I didn't know that that was a thing. So <laughs> did you know that was a thing? Yeah, well, usually in the Six Nations, it's you know one of the assistant coaches calls you if you're in, but ah, if you're right. not, sometimes it's Gregor. So all right, okay. <laughs> really <laughs> glad you didn't know it. Yeah, I know, like, I know. Otherwise, I'm, got no, a I'm no in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And were you at home? I was in the flat uh, yeah. with Murphy, Murphy yeah. and we got the, yeah, so I got the call and then mm. uh, oh. called my folks, let them know oh, yeah. after. I actually waited till they finished at oh. work and then called them, so. Yeah. With Murphy Walker? Mur Murphy Walker, yeah, yeah. Now, did he get the call saying he wasn't selected? Uh, yeah, that was like maybe an, an hour or so later yeah. or something. So that's quite difficult. Yeah. Environment, isn't it? Like you have to be really sensitive for that. But yeah, he'll be delighted for you, but disappointed for himself. Obviously. Yeah, I think delighted so, yeah. for you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. At this point as well, I guess you're getting a chance to reflect on like your last Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Uh, you were busy. <laughs> like, what you played like three of the pool games in that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So for the last World Cup, obviously it was obviously I was a lot younger. You know, probably more in sort of Rory sort of Sue's and. Um, you know, made my debut in the warm-up games for the... It was France, the wasn't it? Yeah, it was out, out in France, but yeah. don't talk about that. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah. wasn't the best <laughs> result for us. Um, but yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, making my debut out there was amazing at the last World Cup. And so it's been a sort of a diff bit of a different experience this time, you know, being a bit more embedded in the squad and, you know, obviously was happy to be involved in the sort of past three games. So You had a big role when you went out there, though, last time, didn't you? The form you were in and... Would it be fair to say you played more than maybe you expected to? Yeah, probably. Well, when when the, when the squad was orig originally announced, I was obviously, you know, so excited to just be in that initial squad, and then, you know, to even make the squad was obviously amazing and something I you know dreamed of. And yeah, f I think it all sort of grew arms and legs a bit and just sort yeah. of snowballed on a bit, and obviously managed to play, you know, in all the games when we were out there as well. So you know, it was mm. a great experience, and you know, obviously being out in Japan was something special as well. Rory, in terms of your form, the timing of this Rugby World Cup must feel pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely something that, you know, like I was obviously injured in most of the season gone by, um, but I think coming back from injury and like I've obviously played a lot less rugby this season than a lot of the other boys, uh, you feel fresher towards the tail end of the season and then that's, yeah, that's massive because I think it was, well, Scott, well, you were injured for a bit yeah, longer. Yeah, I was going to say, but some of the Glasgow boys <laughs> tell you it was a long season and like boys were going out week after week, so um, to come in towards the end was probably a good thing. This moment as well, like, I mean, I think North Berwick was where you kicked off yeah. your rugby, wasn't it? Yeah. And I, I guess getting the call, we do talk about the fact, Moss is very quick to remind us that this is actually the start of it. Uh, this isn't the end point, this is very much the start of it. But in terms of your own journey, getting that call, knowing that you're going to be on the plane to France. How do you feel about that evolution for yourself? I think, uh, obviously, I was, you know, it was elation when you find out, but I think it'll more be like when we get out and play or after the fact that like, I'll reflect on it. Um, so you, is that how you tend to work? You process afterwards? You yeah, but I think, that's, I think it's a natural thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's, it's, you're obviously focusing on like, training and playing and just being a part of it, and then I think it would only be after the fact that you would take that time to reflect. I was obviously delighted and stuff, and... Like, 
I think I'm aware of you know how what what this is and like what a big deal it is for starting out at North Berwick and coming through. But um, yeah, I think it won't be till after that properly reflect. You're still a young man. Yeah. We're both still young men. Scott's rightly rightly raised to eyebrow. Uh, <laughs> but just to kind of highlight that, can you remember what stage you were at where, in, when Scott was playing in Japan four years ago, the last World Cup? Where was your rugby? Were you in the Academy at Edinburgh at that point? 2019. 2019. Um, yeah, well, I might have even been... Before that, maybe? I might have been still in a gala shields. Yeah, yeah, there. I was probably I was between those two. Yeah. yeah, I was either in gala still playing with Melrose. Yeah. Uh, or so not professional. Maybe training with Edinburgh a little bit. Yeah, maybe just in the fringes. So it shows bit, you yeah. like how it seems like a four-year cycle everybody talks about, but that that's a, a massive jump in yeah. terms of where you are now. And I don't know. I knew say you've missed bits of that period through injury as well. So it shows you how impressive when you've played the impact you've made has been, been incredible and you want to continue that in France yeah 100% and he's beast yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah and I want yeah. It, it, it does fly quickly isn't it like yeah. in terms of that if you're effectively what I can't remember what the terminology was at that point maybe a stage 2 academy player getting yeah, a little something bit like that, maybe, yeah. getting you know playing you know, some, some club rugby when you can but then now I mean, you're going there with you know real opportunity to to make a to marker for the country. Yeah, it certainly happened like very quickly, and yeah. even like while I was at Edinburgh, I wasn't playing much. It wasn't until I came to Glasgow that it's just like happened so so quickly, and played for Glasgow, played for Scotland in that same year or the year after, and then yeah, now yeah, selected amazing. the World Cup squad. Amazing. Yeah. And what's the ambitions for for the next two three months, Scotty? For you personally, obviously know the team ambition, but personally, what's What's going to drive you Personally. Um, in the next few next few weeks and months? Yeah, I, th- I think there's been quite a lot of chat about. Obviously, you know, everyone wants to make the, the 33, but that's that's done and happened now. Yeah. You know, we've we've made the 33, so I think everyone's focusing on that first South Africa game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a massive game out in France. It's going to be, you know, our opening game of the World Cup. Massive occasion for us. So you know, everyone's focused on getting an app starting 15 mm-hmm. at the start. You know, anything else, people will be people will be gutted with not being involved in that so obviously you know again you can be involved in the 23 but you know I think everyone's still fighting to be involved in that starting 15 for that first game doesn't Mitchell. stop does it that's that's the nature of the professional yeah. sport that's a, yeah as you say today is actually day one uh, in terms of uh, off the field stuff I suppose from comparing your last World Cup to this one coming up is there anything that you have taken from that perhaps about how to sustain that amount of time that you're away from home or what about that side of things? Yeah, probably, I think the squad's definitely in a really good place sort of socially off the field as well. I think like the guys got on really well with each other, you know, everyone's, you know, the team room's full at nights, you know, everyone's playing cricket, do you know what I mean, pretty much every day. Um, yeah, we're, we're all socialising well and I think cricket. probably for, for me personally, I think I've learned that like small things like unpacking your room when you get somewhere and like trying to make it feel as much of a you know, just not making it feel like you're constantly going from hotel room to hotel room. You know, it's good in, in Nice this time we're going to be um, based in the same place for a lot of the, the tournament. So, um, yeah, trying to make that hotel our own as much as we can, you know, make it, try and get home comforts. But obviously just socialising off the pitch is just one of the most important things, um, you know, making sure that we're all going out for food, going out for coffees and, you know, just trying to get that close-knit team. Oh, I can see that already this morning. Everybody's over at the breakfast buffet, quite enjoying it. That's how we started <laughs> this really have you been I've, this? I've, I've already. Oh. Was just right to bring that up. I had it under my chair, actually, here. <laughs> uh, Scott Cummins, Rory Dars, congratulations. We're delighted to see you on that flight to France, and we wish you all the very best. Thanks Cheers. very much. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. 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 Hugh Nashman, great to have you. Hearty <laughs> congratulations. Uh, Thank first you. things first, did Edgy kick you out with those shoes? They are unbelievably... White, clean trainers. They're fresh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I had to get some new ones for the for the for the World Cup. So, yeah, you can tell already how excited you are with the news. Like, <laughs> I've known you for a long time, come through the twenties, but I don't think I've ever seen you as excited and as animated. Really, this is this is massive. Congratulations. It, obviously, it's a boring question to ask how everybody how they feel, but I think it's important to ask you because look, we, we can see how you feel. Yeah, this, how you how are you feeling? No, yeah, she said buzzing, buzzing. I've got like a new uh, energy about me today. So uh, it was, it was half of it was just kind of uh, kind of a weight off your shoulders almost yeah. when you get that phone call. Like I was absolutely buzzing. Um, but no, it's it's hard to relax that day while you're waiting for uh, for for Gregor to call you. And then once you got that call, like you say, just buzzing, like uh, energy and a whole load of motivation to go and do yeah. all of this World Cup now. So uh, that's good to know. We spoke about that with everyone here. Eh? The fact that what comes next is, is important, mm. but. 
it's even more difficult, I think, for scum halves, for hookers, hookers mm. yeah. because there was four of each, and mm. it was kind of the depth, you know, of and just even constantly reading, it's probably going to be one of the four mm. hookers or one of the four scum halves. Like in the media, you mean yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah. 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 we it, spoke it, about it. Even that's last mentally week. different for you than it would be for other people in the squad, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like everybody knows, like as you say, like. Well, it's undone. They know that four doesn't go into three, and, yeah. and and they know that it's probably going to be one of you. Especially since, like you say, the hookers are a class and yeah. and learn so much from them. So it is it is really tough, and that is probably in the back of your head. Like yeah, when you when you play in the the warm up games and yeah. stuff, you're thinking, I need to put my best foot forward here because I might only get one or two opportunities to do so. Did the four of you chat about it at all during the process? Is it something that you you raise, or is that or do no, you just keep your head down and focus? You work on well together though, don't you? Like yeah, all so the much, and stuff. yeah, true. Yeah, Great yeah. Amazing. I mean, I, I learned loads off 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 of the boys, so. Obviously, they're a fair bit older than me, and I'm just picking their brains constantly, like <laughs> saying, "Can you watch my clips? Can you do this? Can you do this?" And they're trying to they're, they're trying to chill out and and, and sit down. But um, yeah, I'm just uh, trying to grab them. So uh, nice. no, it's it's been hugely hugely uh, helpful for me, and I think it, it brings my game on. And as you say, we we get a lot of extras done and stuff. So um, it's been a massive. Uh, what do you want to get out of this this, this World Cup then? I guess from from that because you're saying that you're you're now at a point mm. where you've learned a lot from mm. those around you. You've got a really established game within yourself. Mm. What, what's your focus in? No, obviously everybody everybody wants to play. I want to play in the World Cup and I, I want to win the games. I think every every game that we're going to, you know, on 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 our day we should win those games. So that's that's the aim for everybody. And um, yeah, I just want to be involved as much as I can with that and and, and be part of the success. Yeah, your uh, World Cup memories. <laughs> Mixed bag. I <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, thought we said we weren't going to bring that up, Massey, but um, no. Um, class experience in, in Argentina when I was um, when I was younger and, and and like a tournament for me that was probably a huge part of my yeah. career. Probably played yeah. slightly different. Like that was a uh, like I, I was basically playing like eighty minutes every game and yeah. just getting loads of exposure and um, it was a huge experience for me. Like. Um, um, massive and, and a lot of learning as well. Obviously, didn't finish that World mm. Cup. We won't talk about, it, but didn't finish that World Cup as, as as well as we wanted to. But um, yeah, just the taking away from mm. that and stuff. It was, it was huge for me. I think that massively kind of changed the course of, of my career, definitely. And World Cup members of Scotland, 2019, 2015. Oh. Would, you, would you be at games in 2015? Yeah, so so 2015, I went to a few. With my dad, I went to um, it's the the Gloucester Stadium called. But, yeah, but I watched Japan at Gloucester. Oh, um, uh, King's Home. Yeah, yeah, Scotland, Kingsome, Japan. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. King's Home. So I was at. Um, you played Japan. alongside with half of the team that played in that. Yeah. Well, Richie yeah, would have played. Yeah. Japan, Finn scored a try. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, where else? I went to Leeds. Oh, and yeah. Watched. Uh, was at the USA. Scotland, USA. In Leeds, Scotland, yeah. USA. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I was at a few. They were they were good memories. Yeah, they were class, and so that plays a part. Just like um, adds an extra layer of like uh, why you want to be at the World Cup and stuff, and those memories and stuff. Being there with my old man and and my family and. And played alongside the players that were playing, some of the players yeah, that were playing. Yeah, that, yeah, I haven't thought about that too much, to be uh, honest. Yeah, that is, that is funny. But yeah, boys that I'd look up to, um, some of my favourite players like now I'm playing with, so uh, yeah. That'll be your fodder now. You've probably you've probably opened up a thought Sorry. process uh, for him now that'll be... Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that'll I, be <laughs> I just go free not thinking about anything. And I have these conversations I can reflect. Oh yeah, I remember watching that and learning off him. And well, that, yeah, so that, that's it. When you sit, sit next to Mossy for long enough, four Rugby World Cups behind him, uh, that, that'll happen. You yeah. and we are absolutely delighted for you. Thank you very we much. Wish you all the very very best and look forward to following your progress over in France. Ben White congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, okay first thing get out of the way how are you feeling today? Yeah it's pretty cool isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I guess it, yeah, it kind of sets in when you stood there a few photos in front of the bridge and things and you're like right this is actually happening sort of pinch yourself moment isn't it? Because um, I guess it just I don't know it doesn't really really sink in until you're actually you know there and you've got the kit on and you're like right I'm going to the World Cup, it's pretty cool. You're determined to spend time in France, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to sign for Toulon, you're now going over for the World Cup. Yeah, I guess it's a good way to soften, soften me in a bit. Learn the language. Uh, learn the language, gives me an extra <laughs> bit of time to learn. Have you been over yet? Have yeah. you had a chance? Yeah, well, we were training, uh, we did a block, we did a week block in, in, yeah. in Nice, and it actually ended up working out that, like, I spoke with Gregor and the coaches and stuff, but they basically like after a session How's one night, I basically, <laughs> no, well, I hadn't even signed then. So I went, I went out and met with the, with Pierre and, uh -huh. uh, um, and some of the t uh, coaches and, and yeah. people and they showed me around the training ground and stuff and then yeah then over that sort of week the contract and things were agreed and then had to go back for a medical and stuff so I had to be like oh, Gregor can I on my day off is it alright if I go to <laughs> on do my medical <laughs> yeah. uh, like which that. is it's actually quite hard I know <laughs> you have to do a bike and they it's filming everything isn't it yeah, yeah I was yeah, like yeah. Jesus yeah. all day I've yeah. four different hospitals 
Yeah, it was mad, but no, it was pretty cool. It's exciting, yeah. Well, I hope it's as long as, as possible. Well? Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I hope it's as long as possible before you have to get there, though, don't we? Yeah, yeah. 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 In many ways. Uh, are, you le- are you learning the language? Where are you at with yeah, that? Well, I'm having two lessons a week, mm. and I'm. Are they all Finn or is nah. it? Nah, <laughs> Finn, Finn tries to speak to me every now and again, and uh, so does Peter. Um, so they've they've been helping me a bit, to yeah. be fair. So it's good to have them. Um, but no, I've been having yeah two lessons a week really, and then just been smashing Duolingo. But I don't think I'm getting any better. Well, I can like read it now. If some stuff's there, I can read it and speak uh, a little bit. But like, it's so hard. Rugby terminology. Rugby terminology is quite simple, though. You need well, calls, simple. don't you? If you're a but it's like athlete. a set of calls is a set of calls. So yeah. I think, like, yeah. The rugby stuff might that be would okay, be okay. But it's just the everyday life. Yeah. But, uh, as, a, as a scrum half, do they, do they start filtering that stuff to you now? Have you been given any uh, information so far, or is yeah, it very much your focus is on the World Cup? Um, to be fair, they've been pretty good. They've been like, um, you know, you can focus on yeah. on the World Cup and stuff. But at the same time, like I've obviously had with this injury, I've had a bit of time. Yeah. So like when I've had a spare minute, I've just sort of watched some of their their training and some of their clips and trying to learn the calls a little bit, just so I have an understanding of like the way they want to play and the shape, so that I'm not completely like. In at the deep end, you know, but how um, is injury? Yeah, it's Good. not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was a oh, it, was it was a heart and mouth moment when yeah. the way you fell and well, that was a bit of yeah. It was like I was sat there on the floor and like. I've trained eight or nine weeks to yeah. come back from this injury. Twenty minutes in, I was like, "This is not good." But um, no, I mean, it was pretty sore when I did it, and then yeah. it was getting worse when I was playing. I was just like, "Oh no!" I just felt very similar to how I did it last time. But yeah. luckily, on the scan, it was just a grade one rather than because yeah. it was like two, two something uh, when I did it last time. So it wasn't as bad, but it was the right thing to do to come off and be smart than than completely ruin it. Absolutely, um, World Cup. I mean, you'll have loads that we're talking about before, World Cup memories and stuff, but before we maybe go down that route, you've come a long way in terms of your international journey since 2019 World Cup. Did you watch 2019 World Cup? And if you did, did you think I could be playing in this four years later? I did watch it, but no, no, no. It's been it's been a sort of whirlwind, yeah. to be honest. Um, Could you get less at that point? Uh, or would you be... No, that's a good question. Yeah, I would have been, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good question. They all blend into one, Mossy. Like, all your seasons end up being like... Wait till you get to your marriage and uh, you stop going like, as well. Like. What year was that? I don't the know. World Cup's like, blend into uh, one for well, you now. Um, no, yeah. But, but um, it's like a four-year cycle everybody talks about, but it's amazing how a, an individual career and the, the individual performance can change from from what we all call as a cycle, really, isn't it? But you're know, watching probably as a fan or knowing some of the players yeah. and being involved in rugby four years ago to now, going Didn't out with the opportunity to be you know really make a mark internationally no i mean yeah it's it's incredible it's pretty surreal um yeah that's what everyone sort of dreams of isn't it playing at a world cup it's the biggest stage i guess that you know we can play on um so yeah i can't wait to get out there and rip in to be honest um that'd be pretty cool but um yeah i think yeah it's been crazy i never would have thought it come 2019 that i'd be Mm -hmm. You know, be sat in this, this squad, yeah. When amazing. you do, when you do look at other scrum halves and uh, Scotland to fan, and you look at other uh, World Cups that you have watched growing up, what are your thoughts about the fact that you're here now too? And yeah, we were just talking about that. Like, there's there's been some pretty special players for Scotland over the years at scrum half. Um, you know, um, I guess just even like the ones in the squad currently are all, you know, unbelievable players that have been playing really well at the top level for years so um, yeah, it'd be pretty cool to sort of be a part of that uh, like I see you as a real linchpin decision maker calm under pressure quite a mature player for not having spent a huge amount of time oh, in camp I appreciate but, uh, that you're, you're talking as if you feel quite young and quite fresh and not young but like quite oh, inexperienced but you don't play like that no, I feel I feel young which yeah. is good that's a start oh. um, but no like I, I guess I see I was, a real calm head. Well, I guess I was, I was quite lucky in terms of, like, because when 2015 World Cup came around, mm-hmm. when I was at Leicester, you know, a lot of, the, like, Ben Young's ended up going yeah. away with England, so I ended up having a good opportunity to yeah. come sort of through and probably played a bit bit more rugby and spent a bit more time mm-hmm. with the squad from an earlier age. So I guess that's kind of helped me sort of grow yeah. up a bit and try and develop mm-hmm. and stuff. So looking at, looking at the relationships that you've all got, they're absolutely winding you up. They're determined to distract you. Yeah, they uh, are. Looking at the relationships you've got, you've got a good g- group of guys here, don't you? This is uh, a good they're all right, not those ones, but yeah. yeah, the rest of them are right. <laughs> no, they're, they're, no, everyone's really good. And it's, uh, no, it's nice to be sort of part of it. Yeah, it's amazing to be part of this team and there's great personalities and we all have a good laugh and enjoy it and yeah you know it's just never had this with the forwards you're the first back we've spoken to in the forwards are just there and 
can you get on with it now that the backs have come and there's all sorts like of I don't want to say that uh, you have behaved, behaved, you've got to yeah. enjoy it haven't you like, it's, it's, been, it's been tough <laughs> don't be wrong like, it's not been a jolly <laughs> but like it's, switching know. on switching off we spoke about this with Jamie how yeah. important it is and he so says that's a real strength in the camp is like when you're on it you're on it and the, the edge is there at training but you can be like that because it's, it's tough it is tough to get like yeah. it is really tough to get and I think like there is a great balance here like you say like when we're in the gym or when we're in meetings yeah. or training and stuff we're fully on and but the second you're in the hotel and stuff like we spend so much time together if you're always on and always like yeah. you just burn out and get drained whereas I guess everyone's sort of we all sit in the team room and have a laugh together and it's quite nice to relax and spend it time in each other's company well some of them not those <laughs> yeah you're a good ladies and athlete as well isn't she she's a tennis player uh she is yeah and so it must be quite interesting having two athletes between you you're both professionals you both do that what, what sort of relationship have you got with that in terms of your your schedule you've got a world cup coming up is yeah. that all uh, i spend a lot of time on the phone <laughs> uh which is great i'm not great at texting so um, no, nah, it's, it's, it's alright, it's, you know, it's great to have us both doing something we love and, you know, when the World Cup's on, she'll be at the US Open, so it's a pretty exciting time for us both and, it's, yeah, it's just a good time in our lives, you know, and it's enjoying it and it's nice to sort of, yeah, just enjoy the ride together, I guess, it's, it's a good, it's good fun. Do you play tennis? Yeah, I'm terrible, <laughs> are terrible, you? I, really bad. Are you, are you just saying that? No, 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 yeah. genuine, mm. genuine. Ah, uh, like, I'm, I'm alright. <laughs> it is, it is, but, like, it is. Nah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, she tells me I'm rubbish as well, but I mean... Could you hit back with the missus? Like, could you... Yeah, but if she wasn't well, trying... If she wasn't trying... Like, if she, w- if she was... If she when does an athlete never battered. try you? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> like, there you go. I, I, I wouldn't even try to admit that I could win a point. No. <laughs> not really, no. Not good. Not good. Well, the thing is, if you're in if you're in the Scotland setup, you need to be good at two things, by all accounts. You need to be good at rugby. And you need to be good at table tennis. So as long as you can start my, my table format. tennis is better than my, uh, my actual tennis. Go. Is it still big in the team room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tennis? Matt Ferguson thinks he's really good. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to put him in his place. Do one. Uh, I, I don't think he's beat me yet. So he gets <laughs> so angry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, him and Scoomies have some good matches. Um, but no, I enjoy it. Um, yeah, Matt's pretty good. To tell you who is very good, George Horn and Carl Stein. Oh, yeah, those two are, I don't even bother. Mm. I just look at, I'm walking up like. <laughs> TT champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon those two would be the best. They'd be, they'd be the ones I'd be like, well, I'm not beating them. <laughs> well, bringing it back to rugby and then we'll let you, you, you go and get some more of, uh, food from that delicious buffet. But your halfback partnerships as well, in terms of the relationship between you and your tens, how do you enjoy that? Uh, in the Scotland setup, I guess. And uh, how is that growing looking into the World Cup? No, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's great to be a part of them. You know, they're all slightly different in the way that they play and stuff, but they're all really good leaders. They talk really well. They work hard, and, you know, it's, it's great to sort of, yeah, be part of that. It makes my life easier, you know. Um, when you have a good fly-off outside, you, you know, they, they almost control the game and stuff, and you just do your job inside them. So it's nice to sort of work in harmony with that, and, yeah, look, they're really good players. It's exciting to be inside them, yeah. Cannot wait to see this come onto the pitch in the World Cup coming ahead. Very best wishes to you, Ben White. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers. Congratulations. Thanks, Benny. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the official Scottish Rugby Podcast. Mossy and I, great to catch up with all the guys there. You have your last opportunity to see Scotland at Scottish Gas Murrayfield against Georgia on the 26th of August. That's the last opportunity before they head out to France for this year's World Cup. I'll be there. Mossy will be there. We hope to see you there too, supporting Scotland.